Well, I made a start on painting the bear hawk um, with, a, with a top coat. So in the last video, I was preparing it with a uh, primer filler. And uh, now I've gone ahead with the orange top coat. Now, I've had mixed results, to be honest. Um, it started off uh, really, really well, actually. I, I put a couple of uh, tack coats on um, and then went ahead. And uh, after the first day, I was very, very pleased with my results overall. And... Uh, Ran out of paint that day, um, decided just to leave it and, and uh, go ahead the next day, uh, which I did. So I let it cure overnight and I was following the instructions to a T um, because I'm a novice and I've never done this before. So the next day um, I spent a couple of hours scuffing it up with some scotch bright to uh, promote a bit of adhesion. And then I decided to lay down a wet coat. Now that's not how you do it. I was following the instructions. Um, unfortunately too close and what they don't mention is that you always need a tack coat so I found this out talking to a couple of friends who have some uh, spray painting experience so um, what I did after that was I spent an entire day sanding the, the whole aircraft down because what happens when you spray um, a wet coat on the on the fabric without a, a tack coat there's nothing to hold it there and it runs and it runs really really badly so I ended up actually just pushing a lot of it, uh, brushing it off with a, with a uh, rag. Uh, it was a complete mess. I then proceeded um, with painting the sides of the aircraft and much better um, results there. Unfortunately, through more fault of my own and my inexperience, I did get some solvent popping, what they call solvent popping, very, very small blisters forming under the paint, almost looks like dust and uh, a little bit of orange peel. So I downed tools, I was extremely demoralized. <laughs> I went back and spent a couple of hours on the internet trying to research where I had gone wrong. Spent the whole day sanding it back and uh, fortunately I've come up with a reasonably good result. So at the moment, um, what we're looking at here, I have painted the top and the bottom of the aircraft with their final coat and one side of the vertical stabilizer. I've yet to do the top coat on the side, so I'm gonna do that tomorrow morning. We've got very, very hot weather here in New Zealand at the moment. Um, it's about 33 Celsius outside. If I get up early in the morning, it'll probably be uh, more like 16, 17 degrees. And I can, um, uh, one thing I've learned is you've got to uh, spray when the temperature is moderate, not at extremes. So, how's it turned out? Well, mixed results. I'm very happy with the finish on the vertical stabilizer. It's got a real sheen on it. Um, the top and bottom, you can see what look like um, brush marks. Not real happy. The bottom, I couldn't care less. The top though, actually when the aircraft is finished, it's gonna be sitting up a little bit steeper than this. So when viewed from the back, you will see the top. And I was quite keen to get a nice coat on that. On the side panels, um, either side, it's come up very, very well. The one in the center, not, not so much. You, you, you can see the brush marks there. Anyway, look, it's my first attempt. Um, one thing I do take issue with a little bit, uh, the Stuart systems promote themselves with a, uh, with a catchphrase saying that uh, it's a distinct advantage if you don't have any spray painting experience before. I take issue with that. It's a huge advantage if you have spray painting experience before, but there are some slight differences with using the Stuart systems paint. And the main one is that you um, apply very thin coats and a few more of them. So when I was able to talk to a couple of friends that had prior spray painting experience, they told me some very valuable tips. Um, that said, would I do it again? Yes, I would, because I've now learned those lessons. Unfortunately, I had to learn those lessons on my beautiful bear hawk. Um, I've been able to salvage most of it. Most of it's coming up actually very, very good. And I think on the sides and the, and the vertical stabilizer, um, I'm gonna get probably a better finish than I would have otherwise. And as I mentioned, the only real issue is, uh, is this top panel here. When I come to do the rest of the empennage, all the boot cowl, etc., etc., I know where I went wrong and uh, hopefully I won't make that mistake again. I'm very happy with the color. Now, in the last video, I mentioned uh, I was spraying on top of a gray primer. Um, yes, I now know for certain colors, uh, like yellows and oranges, you don't, ideally, you don't want to spray on top of a gray primer. Now, yesterday, my uh, white primer did arrive. A little bit too late, that's no one's fault, really. It would have been helpful if they had mentioned uh, 
the white primer as being more suitable over the phone call when I ordered it. Um, anyway, that said, I just put on a few more coats and uh, I've got a very, very good uh, sort of depth of color going on, on on the aircraft there. Very happy with that and uh, yeah, great saturation. So I, I, I think it's a very bold, strong color that I was after. Yeah, so the gray paint for my fabric interior arrived yesterday. Now, I had ordered this once again over a phone call to Stuart Systems. And yesterday it arrived. And I'm not sure if you can read that, but what it says is not for fabric. So that's for my fabric aircraft. So <laughs> that took four weeks to get here and I'm back to square one. Yeah, so um, look, yesterday wasn't a great day Stuart Systems wise. Um, I, I'm sure it's a great product once you get it on and once you've learned how to use it. I'm just struggling a wee bit to get there. Um, hopefully I'm through the worst of it. Um, I am looking forward to laying that final coat on the sides of the fuselage tomorrow. Hopefully much, much better results. And um, yeah, once it's all done, I'll, uh, I think I'm about due for a six month video update. So I look forward to doing that. <laughs>